everyone for the next five weeks leading up to Ruby Volume 5. We're going to be doing Ruby Top 5s. And speaking of 5s, you should become a Patreon for $5. Uh, so you can support the channel and get my videos an entire week early. And if you like Ruby, you should join our Discord chat server. So today, Hunter and I are going to be going over my list for the Top 5 Plot Ideas. I want to see in uh, Ruby Volume 5, so similar to our other videos, these are kind of plot points where we don't actually know whether or not they'll show up, like I use this as an example, uh, but for my character list, obviously I'm not going to put Adam on there because Adam's pretty much almost guaranteed, so these are things where I'm not exactly sure if they will happen or not, and so that's why they're on the list and I'm hoping for them. Uh, meanwhile, there's stuff that I know is guaranteed, like Yang existing in the next volume, you know what I'm saying? Bitch, so, maybe, like we saw what <laughs> happened to Pure. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And so I'm just trying to kind of use uh, plot points that would be interesting to see, but we don't know for sure if they'll actually happen yet. And so um, these are things that we'd like to explore or things that would get wrapped up, or just ideas for plot things that seem plausible enough that they're not a theory, uh, but not plausible enough as we don't really know yet. <laughs> so I hope that gives you some explanation. This was the hardest list to actually name, because this is just like ideas for volume five, you know what I mean? Um, so let's get started. Uh, so number five, I have Jacques sending people to recover Weiss. Uh, so I think Jacques was gonna, he kind of implied he was gonna tell people that Weiss went crazy and then she could no longer be heir because she wasn't fit for it and just keep her in the house all the time. You know, say that she lost her mind because what she witnessed at Beacon was too dramatic for her and stuff like that. But if the news came after that that she was perfectly fine, I bet the news people in Atlas would basically have a field day with that information because I think that Atlas is a place where everyone secretly hates Jock, but they're all nice to him because they know he's the most powerful in a sense. You know what I mean? Hunter's nodding like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like in my mind, nobody actually likes Jock. They're just nice to him and they're kind of waiting to see him fall almost, and so that would be a great fall that I think all the rich people would kind of be happy to snicker about, like Jacques having a press release saying Weiss isn't fit to be heir anymore, and then it comes out that she's actually perfectly fine, and then even the legality of that, I don't know how that works. Like, can I don't think you can just... I mean, you can will a country to whoever you want. A company. A company. A country. But as for a rightful... But but then think about, like, rightful heir to a throne, right? Yeah, like, but that's it's kind not of how a I'm thinking monarchy, of strictly speaking. Not exactly, but I feel like that that may be how the company works, because then why couldn't he just will it to Whitley instead of, like, telling everyone... Because maybe Weiss he still not. had hope for a wife, but then he lost all his hope for a wife. I, I, I guess, I don't know. Like, but he, he wouldn't need to, like, call her crazy and everything. That, that's just kind of unnecessary, because he could just say, nah, I picked Whitley instead. I mean, but apparently this society would have a problem with... Yeah, he said that he was going to tell everyone that Weiss was crazy, right? Okay. And then she had PTSD from... Or, no, just was wrecked with grief. I don't think yeah, crazy exactly. Like, that she... What happened at Beacon was too traumatic or something. That's kind of what he said. Um, and so... In that regard, like... Yeah, Whitley would be the next one to get the company, right? So that's kind of what that implies, if anything. And so he wouldn't have to do that if, like, I guess the system was different. And maybe it's not even up to him, because even though he's running the company, the name should still be in Mishni, right? And so he would kind of have to kind of convince her uh, to also agree with him about that. Uh, but that probably wouldn't be too hard since, like, you know, he's she's kind of let Jock do everything else. But then say he announces that, and then in Atlas they're like, wait a minute, she's fine, what do you mean? Like, you know, kind of laugh at him. And I think that what Jock hates most is being... Laughed at? Yeah, laughed at, or just... I don't want to say being wronged, but being embarrassed is kind of what I mean. Like, I think his pride is bigger than him. Um, I don't think his ego is, like... Uh, gonna be that it, he lives in a glass house you know as soon as somebody throws a rock at him because they realize that Weiss uh you know is perfectly okay even if he can do whatever he wants and air the company do whatever he wants it's going to embarrass him and he won't like that uh, so I think that it's gonna follow the snow story of Snow White uh because as you guys know Snow White the Huntsman goes after Snow White and Snow White with her personality uh kind of convinces the Huntsman that she's sweet and innocent to let her go but in this case Weiss could also maybe manipulate uh the person that they sent to chase after her with her personality or she could just kick her ass and so I think that would be 
a pretty cool plot point uh, to go off of. And that would also kind of fit with her Volume 5 trailer, in my er, in my opinion, just because if you think about it, somebody comes after Weiss, it's the middle of the night, Winter kind of sees it, but she wants to see how Weiss will handle it now. Weiss takes care of them just fine, and she says, see, I told you that if you had to run... Uh, you would have to be kind of better, or whatever she said. And so I feel like that would be a very good plot idea to incorporate into the show. Yeah. Next, I have Ilya speaking to Adam. So uh, this is one of the ones where I was like, it'll probably happen, but I'm not too sure about it. So I added it anyway. It would be interesting to see how they interact, since they do kind of have a common mentality of like, hey... Violence will get us whatever we want, but then of course I love kicking people's teeth in. Yeah, Hoo of course right. though like Ilya has some sympathy for Blake Meanwhile, Adam wants to kill her right and so it would be interesting to see if Adam lies to Ilya about that to kind of get Ilya on her side that he's just trying to get Blake back and that's why she has to spy on her and everything. But really, Adam's intentions are more sinister and we know that and that's why Ilya is working with him. Because it doesn't really make sense for Ilya to be working with him unless she's either working as a double agent, like she's taking up this job to make sure Blake remains safe uh, rather than actually kill her, kill her, or she's doing it because she doesn't know what Adam's intentions are. She Like, she's being lied to. And I could see, basically, um, us seeing this because even though we do see the villain side, it doesn't really make us, like, it doesn't really make sense to take us into the White Fang because I feel like they haven't gone there yet. But what we've always seen is kind of Ruby and then Cinder's faction, right? And I, if I, we had to make it a book, right? Maybe Ruby would be one main character and then Cinder would be, like, the other one and that's how we see things, right? Because I think Cinder is the one that we're seeing kind of the Salem stuff through. Obviously it's third person, but if it was first person, it would be through Cinder's eyes. Uh, that's kind of the idea that I have. Um, and so if Cinder is still working with Adam, she could go to see Adam, see what's going on and overhear a conversation between him and Ilya or uh, Ilya can come in while they're talking and they, that's how we find out that information. So it's not just like, here's a conversation between Ilya and Adam, you know what I mean? Like we're still able to see it through Cinder's eyes. She's a character that's been established as somebody that has kind of a point of view going on, if you will. And so we could learn that information very naturally and it would be very important considering that Blake is uh, taking down the main part of the White Fang and Adam is still after her. Number three, I have Yang confronting Raven, so I talked a lot about this in our character video, uh, which uh, is going to be the next one that comes out. It's going to be the very, very last one. Uh, so Raven returning is kind of up in the air right now, just because she doesn't fit in too well into the main plot at the moment, because it's like, we gotta stop the fall of Mistral, but there's also that White Fang that, you know, there's not really much room for her to be here right now, but it would be interesting if Yang and Raven finally met this season, since uh, Yang says in Armed and Ready that she'll stop living in the past, and sometimes to put the past behind you, you kind of need to bury the hatchet and move on, and so that's why I kind of think that two things will happen with Yang, is that she'll confront Blake, they'll have one conversation, and Yang will be like, that's kind of all I needed, I just wanted us to talk about it, but I'm ready to move on because I'm done living in the past I want to live in the present and she'll kind of have that attitude with Raven or she won't have that conversation with Blake because she thinks that's her that that's her mentality so to speak and then she realizes it, like when it comes to Raven she can't be that way does that make sense it's so with Blake she's like yeah it's cool or whatever you know I'm done living in the past but as soon as Raven comes into her life like, she Mommy. realizes that the past still has a hold on her that maybe with Blake she was okay but she's not as strong as she thinks right I like that one <laughs> and so anyway at number two I have Jean meeting Pierre's parents the reason this is on the list is because I'm not sure whether or not the show is gonna go in this direction because it's something a lot of people have talked about and I know they don't look at that kind of stuff but um, they said that, actually, they saw an OC that looked exactly like, like, the original version of Ren, or something, and they were really afraid people would say that they copied, mm -hmm. uh, the person that made- So they don't really look at that stuff, but I think they'd be afraid of copying someone else's idea. So I don't think that if this wasn't written in from the beginning, it won't happen. And so it's kind of up in the air. If not John, it would be nice to see Ruby or anyone else from Teen Juniper have to break the news. Uh, to them because they wouldn't know yet at least that's kind of the idea that a lot of people have throwing around is they'd like to see that Pierre's parents don't know they think that she's fine and they think that 
she's just traveling with the team and everything, you know what I mean? And I know it's a popular one, uh, but that's uh, that's why everybody wants it so bad, because it's also a good one, you know? And I think that it would also show John's character development, right? Because we've seen John seasons one, two, three, like, even, like, in his interactions with Weiss would be, is going to be interesting to see, because he was someone that was kind of like, corny jokes to flirt with her and everything and so it'll be nice to see how he interacts with her but that kind of corny joke stuff was a part of his personality to extent and then him not having that anymore will kind of show his maturity and so when he talks to Pyrrha's parents we should be seeing a vastly different John than the one that we saw in volumes one to three and so I think that that'll be really interesting and that can be showcased with him meeting her parents because we've seen sort of you know we've seen volume one to three Jean already and how he acts he's kind of like silly and sometimes he's a bit stupid and sometimes even misogynistic depending on the conversation uh you know the damsel in distress thing that he said uh but you know what I mean and so I think now we'll see that he is someone who's very mature uh and he w became more mature with Pierre's help and now Pierre's death has kind of launched him into forcing him to grow up right and so I think that's interesting Finally, this isn't really necessarily a plot thing, but at number one, I have Mistral having a large death count. And I'm gonna explain that, what that means right now. So, there was only one person we really, really know that died during Be during what happened at Beacon, and that's Pyrrha. Because Penny died before, so she doesn't really count, right? She, she was like the preliminary, preliminary uh, to, like, the actual battle for Beacon and everything, so she's kind of, like, she's the she point was zero the death casualty. That it off. Yeah, exactly. So I would say it's either one or two. Pyrrha and Penny, or just Pyrrha, technically, because she was killed during the battle. Penny was just kind of, like, it happened before, and so I, I wasn't sure if it counted. But since Ruby is getting darker, and the forces of darkness have gotten stronger, when Mistral falls, um... If, I'm pretty sure Mistral is gonna fall, but let's say if Mistral falls, I think that I'd like to explore a large death count because we don't have a death count from Beacon. Like, we don't know how many, if any students died, if any pedestrians died, if it was just injuries and then Pyrrha's death. That pe We don't even know if people know, right? So it'd be interesting if first we see, like, just catastrophe, you know what I mean? Like, we see bodies lying around on the street, like, sort of like with, um, you know, the huntsman that died, we didn't really see other people around him, and so it'd be interesting to see just a group of dead NPCs, 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 dead not, background, not a video game, <laughs> dead background characters that we can look at this scene and say there are at least 30 people that have died here because of Cinder, you know, we have to give Cinder a bigger death count, because right now she has only really caused destruction to Pyrrha, everyone else from Beacon seems okay. Girl, if you want to get, if you want them to respect you, you gotta commit genocide. I know. And I think that whether the character is good or evil, I think it's a good time for characters to die on both sides since Beacon didn't really fall, right? Beacon was taken over for a time, but the tower didn't fall, right? Because he said, we can't let the tower fall. But I think this time they're definitely going to make the building fall. And you know, if Mistral as a building falls down, like that has to cause some people to die. You know what I mean? And so, you know, unless it's entirely evacuated, but even like you think about de debris, you think about all the grim that had to cause it to fall down, like, depending on which direction it goes in, like, because it's not going to fall straight down. It may fall sideways, depending on what bumps into it. Like, like that! <laughs> that was a good You know what I mean? That could definitely kill a couple people right there. Um, and so that's kind of my thing, is that I want to see a death count. I want to see... Bodies. I want to see bodies. Uh, not just bodies, but I think this is a good time to kill off some side characters. And I have another video I'm working on about Ruby and adding too many characters, and we'll talk about that another time. Um, but I think the school, like, the school's falling is just gonna get worse. So if Beacon was, like, a 1, Mistral's gonna be at least a 2, and if so, only Pyrrha died during the Battle of Beacon, we should have at least two side characters that are dead. And the building should fall, and there should be civilian casualties. <laughs> that is kind of what I want. So, Hunter, what do you think about all that? I would share what I think, Cal, but uh, I will also be doing a video of my own things that I want to happen in Volume 5. Okay, and that well, wouldn't be very sporting. If we'll, if 
we ever see it, um, oh, you can try. I'm just saying, by the time you get it done, Volume 5's probably going to be out, so... Bitch, by the time... Like, Volume 5 almost came around by the time you finally got around to doing the most popular Ruby theory there is. Well, anyway, but and what do you, someone what else do you think of my it? ideas? I, en then? I really like your ideas. You, you almost said that you enjoyed them. I enjoyed them. You should go back to saying that you enjoyed them. I'm so happy. Which one do you think was the best? Like, it doesn't need to be... Because Death Count isn't really a plot point. It's more of a plot idea, which is plot what idea. I'm calling this video. I think the one I like the most is your first with Weiss. Yeah, I, I wrote that and I was like, should this be higher? And I'm like, I don't know. But I like a lot of them a lot. And so it was hard to pick a first, you know? Like, if all of my other ones were like like, a 10 out of 10, like, Jock was just a 9 out of 10, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't too much lower than everything else, I really enjoyed thinking about that one, and it's just, again, it's not necessarily the best idea, but what I would like to see, right? And so Jock is definitely the best idea on that list. I think after that one, probably Ilya and Adam having a conversation would be the second best. Um, but anyway, if you guys enjoyed this list, Remember that you should become a $5 patron on Patreon to get this video early, or you should join our Discord server and come chat with us. So we will talk to you later. Bye, guys!